Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the market cycle ROI of Ethereum. We typically do this for Bitcoin. This is the first time we're gonna be looking at it through the lens of Ethereum. If you guys like the content, we like to present things uh, in a different way on this channel than you'll find on most other channels, so make sure you subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Also, check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're gonna go on a bit of a journey here, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, the first thing I should say with the Ethereum market cycle ROI is we do not have nearly as much data to work off like we do with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, you could argue based on say market cycle bottoms after you know approximately 85% drops, we have four distinct cycles. The first one just being when we first have data starting off early on, and then each subsequent one after these, you know, Im Im fairly uh, impressive bear markets. So we have cycle one, two, three, and four. And one of the things we've discussed is the idea that each cycle seems to be a little bit less volatile than the last. Cycle one for Bitcoin put in a 600x for market cycle bottom. Cycle two was a 500x. Note that this is based off daily data. If it were based on hourly wicks, this one could easily go up several more X. It's just based on, on exactly the closing price on that first cycle. And also a lot of the data from very early on is, is not necessarily the most reliable. And then the third cycle was only about 100X from only about 100X from market cycle bottom. And it took a few hundred days longer than this one. We're currently in the fourth cycle for Bitcoin as measured from market cycle bottom. So let's take a look at Ethereum. The first thing we'll note with Ethereum is that the first cycle, if we measure it this way, would yield us an ROI of over 3000X. Think about that, 3000X. So is it fair to compare it to Bitcoin in this way? Well, if you look at Bitcoin, the first cycle only took us to a, a modest 600X, but then the second cycle took us to a 500X. So is it fair to compare Ethereum, Ethereum's launch and subsequent move over 800 days with any single early cycle for Bitcoin because the first cycle for Bitcoin only lasted just over 200 days. Perhaps it would be more of a fair comparison to say, you know, measured against cycle one and cycle two. If you add up the days from cycle one and cycle two from say, I mean, they have to go to the peak, back down to the bottom and then back up to the peak. So this will be about, you know, 450 days plus another, you know, maybe 750 days. We're looking at 1200 days um, for Bitcoin. Obviously for Ethereum, it was only over 800 days. So even that is not necessarily the best comparison um, with, with, you know, the first two cycles for Bitcoin taking longer than this first cycle for Ethereum. So obviously this, you know, the data is not presented in a way that necessarily um, we can extract the most information out of, namely because Ethereum launched in, in Q3 of 2015, whereas the bottom for Bitcoin and arguably the bottom of the entire market cycle happened in January of 2015. So, it, it, you know, because Ethereum launched during the middle of the cycle, things are just not going to line up quite as well as we would want them to. Um, but in order to be fair, what if we were to break Ethereum's last cycle down into sub-cycles? And, and let me show you what I mean. For instance, we could argue that Ethereum went through several sub-cycles where it went up a lot and then cooled off for a while. This first move, you might consider it to be a, a pretty substantial move. It went up 30x up here, about 40 to 50x or so, and then ultimately retraced back down fairly significantly over the next 100 or 200 days. And then when it, it went on another run. So let's break this down. What if we take this as one sub-cycle? If you do that, you get just over 200 days, you know, maybe 250 days coming in at a modest 20, 30, 40, 50 X or so. Now remember, if you look at Bitcoin's first cycle, it also took about 250 days and it came in at approximately 600 X. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Let's just try to compare similar time frames here. So this you might consider to be the first sub cycle for Ethereum. Obviously it was in the grand market cycle that generally tracks what Bitcoin did, 
but you could say that this was the first sub cycle where Ethereum went on a fairly nice rally and then it, it cooled off for a while. But in the same manner, Bitcoin also cooled off for a couple hundred days before going on its next rally back in, in cycle one and cycle two. So it is somewhat of a fair comparison. If you do that and then you overlay the next stretch, so from this bottom over here up to the next point, you get something that looks like this. Okay, so it, it actually tracks fairly well when you normalize it from that sub cycle, sub market cycle bottom, uh, that you can see a pretty similar move by Ethereum. Now, if you measure cycle three, let's suppose we're in cycle three, and we take the bottom for cycle three to be December of 2018. Well, in this scenario, you get something that looks like this. One of the things we can obviously say is, well, you know, despite the fact that people will say you're not experiencing diminishing returns or you're not seeing any lower volatility, the data is there. Look at look at these moves compared to this move. Even if you ignore this and you just look at this move, it's not it's not you know it's not a, the price of Ethereum. At least the ROI of Ethereum, as measured from the bottom, is not appreciating nearly as quickly. Obviously, this makes sense from a more fundamental point of view. It's going to take a lot more volume to move coins with much larger market caps. Back over here, the market cap of Ethereum was in the millions, and now it's you know it's well into the billions at this point, over over a hundred billion. So it's going to take a lot more volume to move it. Obviously, there is a lot more volume in the space, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be enough volume to get it to increase at the same rate as it did during the last market cycle. Now, one thing we could say is that you know, well, last time if you if we, you know, we've talked about the March 13th bottom in a lot of different respects. If you look at it on a logarithmic regression curve, it's actually closer to say the 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 fair value for say Bitcoin than it was, or it actually went to the undervaluation region. Back in 2018, it went to more of the fair value. So I've argued before that while the absolute price of Bitcoin in March of 2020 was higher than it was in December of 2018, I like to think. In, in some sense, you could argue that March 2020 could be considered, you know, the start uh, where, you know, it really just wipes everyone out and then that's the start. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Obviously, at the end of the day for Bitcoin, we're going to measure it from market cycle bottom. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to uh, make exceptions or anything like that. But let's suppose for Ethereum, we just ignored all of this data because in this in this instance we broke this up into sub cycles so why don't we just break ethereum's current cycle up into sub cycles as well and say that this cycle started here if you do that you get something like this and this does look somewhat comparable in fact early on it was keeping pace ultimately it failed to keep pace and the funny thing is despite the fact that it did not keep pace we know from March 2020, Ethereum has gone up over 10x. As you can see here, the market cycle ROI is over 10x. Note that this is a logarithmic scale. So this is 1, 10, 100x. So despite the fact that Ethereum has seen a, 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 an amazing 2020 and early 2021, it still isn't even close to keeping up with prior sub-market cycle ROIs. For instance, if you look at cycle 2, the way we currently have it, if Ethereum were keeping up with it, then the ROI from market cycle bottom would be another several X up. It, let's suppose we're at 10X now, it would need to go up to 20, 30, maybe about 40X. So we'd essentially be looking at a 4X multiple from the current price, which would put Bitcoin closer to around $5,000, or sorry, it would put Ethereum closer to around $5,000, which clearly we're not there. So we are seeing diminished volatility this market cycle, that's a fact. That is that it's simply a fact. If that changes, and we are we're, we're somehow miraculously able to come up and, and put in higher ROIs in in the same amount of time, then we'll, that'll be something we discuss. But for now, this is the trend. This is the trend uh, that we have to work with for now. Now, the other thing you could say is, well, why stop here? Why not consider this? This peak to be a second cycle, and then we have a third one for Ethereum. So let's do that. If you do that, you get something that looks like this. So you're, what we're essentially doing is we're breaking this into cycle one, this into cycle two, and then this into cycle three. So if you do that, you get something that looks like this, cycle one, two, and the blue one is three. You can see that we were keeping pace with the blue one 
cycle three for a while, but ultimately we fell behind and it took another approximately over 100 days to get to the same ROI as measured from that sub market cycle bottom. So, um, you know, you have to consider all the different possibilities. One thing to consider for Ethereum is, you know, for, for Bitcoin, the, the second cycle, at, or to say the third cycle was a fairly smooth run up, right? It was a fairly, it was a, it was a much more smooth move to the peak rather than the prior cycles. It's always possible that our current Ethereum cycle is mimicking Bitcoin's prior cycle. We've, we've discussed before that Ethereum volatility is one market cycle behind Bitcoin's. Obviously, we don't know for sure yet, but it's possible that Ethereum's current cycle is mimicking Bitcoin's last market cycle where it was a more systematic and slow move up, if you consider this slow, uh, rather, than, rather than some alternative. Um, if you also, if, if let's look back at this chart, this chart, instead of measuring the market cycle bottom from the uh, end of December 2018, let's just go back with our other analysis and say measure it from March 13th of 2020, and it does look a lot more similar to the last cycle, rather than seeing this, you know, several hundred day accumulation phase, followed by an eventual run up, we're looking at it from say, as measured from March 13th, 2020, you can see that it almost went above it here in terms of its cycle ROI from cycle bottom, was not able to keep pace. Now it's approaching it again. If we experience anything like the last cycle, we would expect periods where we cool off for a while. We've already seen some periods like that. For instance, in the middle of last year, we moved sideways for you know a few months. Obviously, nothing compared to what we saw last cycle yet, but there's, there's a decent chance that we will have phases during this cycle where things get boring for a while, and we might just consider that to be another accumulation phase if, in fact, the integrity of the bull market is still intact. But we'll have to we'll have to play you know we'll have to go uh, basically just walk through this cycle together and ultimately see what plays out. So let me know what you guys think about this analysis. Would you like to see more of it? One idea we could also do is we could look at Ethereum Bitcoin subcycle ROI. We've actually looked at that before, but it has been a while. Regardless, we do have the premium list. If you guys want exclusive content, you can check that out at intothecryptoverse.com. You get access to weekly reports, weekly videos a Telegram alerts channel, a Telegram chat room, a risk dashboard, premium only live streams, a whole lot more. Make sure you guys check it out. We also have a lifetime deal going on for two more days. It'll, it'll, it'll end on February 1st. The prices will go up for the lifetime deal. We have a link to that in the description below. At the very least, you could, you know, you could check out the monthly membership. Um, but regardless, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. You can leave a comment down below. What do you think of this analysis? Do you want to see more of it? Do you like diving into the different possibilities and discussing the ramifications of each? Let me know in the comments below. That'll wrap it up for the video. Subscribe, turn on alerts, and I'll see you next time. Bye.